Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, welcome to the next episode of Patagonia. Happy Sunday. So uh, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about a central nervous system tumor. Uh, I'm going to go over meningiomas. Um, but before I start, so the central nervous system tumor section of Kurt's notes is fantastic. I'm going to try to work my way through it on the weekends uh, moving forward as I hope to apply for a neuropathology fellowship starting in 2026. I'm only a second year resident right now, so I have a lot to learn about pathology in general, but especially about neuropathology. So let's just get right into it. So approximately 1% of tumors in adults um, are central nervous system tumors, but about 25% of malignancies in children <clears throat> are uh, central nervous system tumors, which is only second to leukemia. And there's been a significant increase in the incidence in primary brain tumors in elderly and metastatic processes to the brain far outnumber primary CNS tumors. So on imaging, if you see multiple lesions in the brain, just like in the liver um, or anywhere, I guess, any other organs like the lungs, if you see multiple tumors, uh, a metastatic process is probably going to be higher on our differential diagnosis than if you just see one, one tumor, uh, which if you just see one, perhaps we would be thinking more of a primary process. But based on the location, the age of the patient and imaging findings, you can really develop a pretty good differential diagnosis when it comes to brain tumors and tumors of the central nervous system. But today I just wanted to talk about a dural based process as I mentioned earlier and that's going to be uh, meningioma. So I had a few cases of meningioma this past week on a neuro tumor board at the hospital where I'm training. So I reviewed Kurt's notes in preparation for that, learned a lot and I just thought I'd make a quick video and kind of talk about his notes and then some of the things that I learned. So uh, meningioma as the name would suggest, is a dural, mostly benign, slow-growing tumor. And as the name derives, meningioma, it's derived from meningothelial cells of the arachnoid layer. So the general classic findings for a meningioma, you're gonna have oval-shaped nuclei, which we can see here, with uh, delicate chromatin, and you can have frequent intranuclear pseudo-inclusions. So, Papillary thyroid carcinoma isn't the only thing that you can have those intranuclear pseudo-inclusions with. You can also see them in, see them in meningiomas. And uh, you can have syncytial tumor cells with abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, and then numerous whorls and occasional somoma bodies. So the whorls and swirls and somoma bodies, uh, you know, common buzzwords for like step one and step two, but they do show up. Um, when you're looking at meningiomas, not all the time, but you, whenever you see them, they do show up at times under the microscope. So a meningi meningioma is a most frequent brain tumor in the USA, often occurs in older adults, and the risk for it increases with age. Um, it is more common in females, and then on imaging, you're going to have characteristic dural tail appearance. Uh, grossly, it's going to feel very rubbery or firm, and I heard in a lecture uh, last week that because this is like a firm or a solid lesion or a tumor, that they tend to touch off or smear really well on like a frozen section. So you can even see the whirling or swirls on a frozen because they're such a solid lesion that they touch off and smear really well. So for IHC, for a meningioma, you're going to have a positive somatostatin receptor 2A, or an SSTR 2A. It's likely the most sensitive and specific IHC marker. You also can have positive EMA, vimentin, and PR, and S100 may or may not stain. And the key 67 varies often with grade. So that lecture on PathCast um, that I was watching on meningiomas talks about 
the key 67, as we know, is a marker for proliferation index or the rate of like how mitotic a process is. So if the key 67 expression is low, it's not going to be a very proliferative tumor or not overly mitotically active. So you can just think of that as if it's not uh, multiplying a lot, it's probably not overly aggressive. Lower key 67, lower grade, um, just as a big picture overview way of thinking about it. And then as far as molecular is concerned, uh, an NF2 mutation is common with meningiomas and the cytogenetic, and you can have cytogenetic alterations. There are variable histologic findings with specific grades, which we'll go over further. Um, and the criteria to diagnose atypical and anaplastic meningiomas are assigned regardless of a subtype. And the outcome is typically associated with grade. So higher grade, like other tumors elsewhere in the body, more likely to recur and progress, worse prognosis typically. So some grades regardless of subtypes. So sometimes there's only focal changes. So in a, an atypical meningioma or a WHO grade two process, you need either one of the major criteria or three of the five minor criteria. So that would be a meningioma with either increased mitotic activity, so four or more mitoses per 10 high powered fields, brain invasion, or at least three of the following minor criteria. <clears throat> increased cellularity, small cells with a high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, sheet-like growth, spontaneous tumor type necrosis, or macronucleoli. And those criteria will get you to WHO grade 2 or atypical meningioma, but for WHO grade 3 or anaplastic meningioma, you're going to have overtly malignant cytology uh, resembling a carcinoma, melanoma, or a sarcoma, and or markedly elevated mitotic rate greater than or equal to 20 mitoses per 10 high-powered fields. And meningiomas, anaplastic meningiomas, who grade 3, often contain necrosis and have a key 67 expression greater than 20%. So some common meningioma subtypes. Um, and to define these subtypes, you usually want more than 50% of the tumor to have this morphology. So the classic one is a meningothelial, which is a grade one. And the, the description of a meningothelial is it has classic typical morphology, as we discussed previously, and it is, it is the most common and you have a lobulated architecture. You can have fibrous subtype of meningioma with spindled cells forming parallel to story form bundles with abundant collagen matrix, transitional or mixed subtype, which can be meningothelial and fibrous with conspicuous whorls and somoma bodies. You can have somomatous, which as the name would suggest, can have a predominance of somoma bodies, which we see here, over tumor cells, and it's often in the thoracic region. You can also have angiomatous meningiomas with numerous blood vessels. Uh, and like most things in pathology, or in medicine in general, the name often gives it a rip, gives it away. So angiomatous, you're thinking vessels. Um, you can have microcystic, so cells with thin, elongated processes creating a cobweb-like cobweb background. Um, secretory, with focal epithelial differentiation. Intracellular lumina with PAS positive secretions, uh, which are pseudosomomatous bodies. And you can also have lymph lymphoplasmocyte rich meningiomas with extensive chronic inflammatory infiltrates, often overshadowing, overshadowing meningothelial cells. You also can have metaplastic meningiomas, which have a mesenchymal component such as osseous, cartilaginous, my myoid, lipomatous, or xanthomatous. And that just makes sense, right? Like metaplastic. You could think the tissue is undergoing metaplasia into another type of tissue like bone or cartilage, muscle, fat, or uh, xanthomatous. And for grade two, so if you see these subtypes, that could be 
one of the minor criteria to get you to a atypical meningioma who grade two, and that would be choroid. So you can have cords or trabeculae of eosinophilic, often baculated cells, set in a mucoid matrix like a chordoma, or you can also have clear cell, which are polygonal cells with clear glycogen-rich cytoplasm and prominent perivascular and interstitial collagen, sheet-like. And then for grade three, you can have papillary subtype, which is going to be perivascular pseudopapillary pattern with a loss of cell cohesion resembling pseudo rosettes or a rhabdoid subtype of meningioma where you'll have rhabdoid cells with plumps which are plump cells with eccentric nuclei, open chromatin, prominent nucleoli, and eosinophilic cytoplasm. And that's it. That's all for meningiomas. Just a quick review video and I hope you found it helpful and I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday and a great week. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and take care.